This is so awesome to see be here in Amsterdam again. Uh, I love coming to Perth now. It's like coming home, you know, seeing all the Perth people. And let's see, ah, the clicker. Do we have a presentation clicker? Ah, there it is. Yeah, so um, this will be us tomorrow. We're going to be seeing more of our colleagues. And uh, what actually brings us all together? What do we have in common besides our stunning good looks? Maybe? Well, when we see a waterfall chart like this, like we get excited about it. And we start to think. And then we do three things. We measure, we investigate, and then we optimize. And ideally, optimi we optimize things with the biggest impact. But let's put this into some context. So as WebPerf people, we work in or for an organization, which is part of the ICT sector, so Information and Communications Technologies. And that operates on a global scale. So from that perspective, we as WebPerf people all work on the largest machine that was ever built, the internet. And as we all know, the internet doesn't just run on bits and bytes on thin air, but rather we need data centers, networks, devices. And to build and keep those devices running, we need gobs of energy, land, water, and resources. So what is our impact actually in our jobs from this point of view? So we talked about water and resources, but let's just look at global greenhouse gas emissions by sector. And almost three quarters of that is due to energy generation and use. And the ICT sector is responsible, responsible for between two and 4% of global emissions, which is about the same as Germany or the same as the aviation industry. And this, percentage is expected to grow up to 14% within the coming years. Around 70% of ICT's footprint is due to device use, and the rest, and the rest is due to uh, production, so manufacturing devices. And different studies all project emissions um, that will rise over the next few years uh, and decades. And that's due to several trends that you're all, uh, all aware of. We have AI, we have big data, data science, blockchain, internet of things, where we generate and consume ever more data, and energy, need ever more devices for that. David Arbura is a has been a coral reef expert for the last 30 years. And he said recently in New York Times, we need to shift how we consume on the planet because we have exceeded the limits. So digital is physical. It has a social component and a human cost. So uh, with all that in mind, is our job just to make the web faster? Are we just supposed to be keep doing business as usual, like tweaking the cars, making them faster, go, um, go around the track without thinking about our impact on the world. Or maybe it's about reducing the number of cars, maybe asking people to switch to bikes. So let's look at some of our biggest challenges in this regard. So we have too much energy, energy consumption and too many devices. So what do we do as perf people already? Well, we reduce page weight and energy consumption in that regard. We optimize media, um, audit third parties, compress and minify cache, remove unused code. We implement performance budgets to keep things under wraps. And we like to support legacy devices progressively. So not modern devices are not mod uh, loading legacy code. A couple things we have to keep an eye on, watch out for, is shotgun preloading. So basically preloading everything linked on a page using too many media formats. We don't want one pixel breakpoints for images and all that. 
and uh, maybe track, I mean, because we track a lot of data, we also have to consider uh, an end of life strategy. So when do we delete and remove data? And there are several things we can do. Additionally, we can measure green metrics, and I'll talk about this in a second. We can switch or ask our clients to switch to green hosting or clouds um, that use renewable energy, do carbon awareness, so processes that take a lot of um, energy, run those at times when the energy mix is particularly uh, sustainable, renewable. Keep going with accessibility and implement environmental budgets. And we should also start looking at our cloud and ISP um, data. data. But those are two mainly technical problems with technical solutions, and we're missing out, missing one big thing, and that's the human factor. And due to the Jevons paradox, um, the more efficient we make a system, the more it, it enables consumption or the de demand. And a way to cap that is by implementing laws, taxes, budgets, and restrictions. And in the EU, we have the Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive and a similar directive coming to California where large companies will have to report on their social impact, their environmental impact, and publicly make known what they're doing to change that. So even smaller corporations can start or companies can help these larger companies report this information. Recently, a W3C community working group uh, put out a draft report of some 96 web sustainability guidelines. Uh, Inez, are you here in the house? I think Inez uh, worked on those. And I had a look at what are the guidelines with the highest impact and lowest to medium effort. And actually, as we see here, it's more in the UX design space, strategy and product management. So actually not so technical in that regard. It's more about, first of all, deciding, okay, do we even need a digital product in the first place? And when we build one, what's the end of life strategy? So those are two main critical things. So it's the human factor again. So we as WebPerf people, we can keep that in mind. We can also get trained in green software practices. We could help inform what not to build, and what to delete, what to remove. We do that already a bit. Raise awareness for the top topic of sustainability and help devise strategies. And then even maybe dabble in some activism in your spare time. So our job is to make the web faster and greener. And we could do so by measuring, investigating, and optimizing. And I'm just going to talk about measuring for a minute, because the topic of the talk is um, a green metric. So if our target is to get to net zero by 2050, we need some sort of metric. And that's CO2 emissions or equivalent. And we can measure that by measuring energy consumption, carbon intensity, and embodied carbon. So how much carbon is emitted when creating or producing devices. So in a perfect world, we could, uh, we could get all this data in real time and at any granularity that we need. But of course, it's not a perfect world. It's very, very complex, especially the internet. And so we need proxies. We can work with software carbon intensity uh, per unit. So say, for example, per page view, per user. And we have several proxy metrics on the back end. For example, cloud energy spent. We could have a look at um, where the pop, lo pop locations get the traffic and determine the energy mix there and get reports on the cloud hardware in use per call, for example. And then on the front end, CPU usage, bytes transferred. And we could take a look at energy mix data in the public realm uh, per page view. Now, speaking of page view, we know from HTTP archive, web pages are continually getting bigger and bigger, so ever more page weight. But we know one megabyte of an image file, for example, looks like this on a waterfall chart. 
but one megabyte of JavaScript is a lot more um, cost uh, expensive from a processing standpoint. Firefox Power Profiler helps us dig into that. So how much energy is used um, when I surf um, a website? And Safari Inspector also has um, energy impact data. So we do. It would be awesome to have um, Chrome also um, give us some uh, energy data there. There are also multiple front-end testing tools, monitoring tools out there already, which basically uh, are based upon page weight times traffic, and then looking at some general um, energy mixes there. Um, some tap into CO2JS, which gives us also um, information on energy mix. So I'm just gonna end, wrap this up with a question or a thought, uh, a thought, an idea. What if we had some APIs that would help us measure this more precisely in the browser? If we had in the navigator object, um, the device age or embodied carbon, don't worry about privacy. <laughs> and what if we had a perfe uh, performance session timing where we get the total transfer size or the total transfer size of, of JS? I don't know if I've always had problems just getting the total transfer size without having uh, dev tools open. It's not easy. And uh, what if we could also get information on in a performance measure on the CPU time, GPU time, energy impact, and wattage? Yeah, so thanks for listening. Um, with that in mind, when we go to Perf Now tomorrow, let's make the web faster and greener. Thank you. Thank you.